Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Marc Owen. In this edition, the French operation in the forefront of the fight against the Islamic State group. Our reporters have gained inside access, living side by side with the pilots and sailors based at sea in the Persian Gulf. They're on board the aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle. From this floating base, they carry out with pinpoint precision sorties to bomb positions of the jihadists in Syria and in Iraq. The role of the Charles de Gaulle is essential to the battle against the jihadist threat. Amel Charrier, Julien Sauvager and Aurélien Porcher with this exclusive report from the Persian Gulf. A Rafale fighter aircraft returns from a mission over Syria, touching down on the deck of the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier. The plane goes from 250 kilometers an hour to zero in the space of just a few meters. The man in the cockpit's tired. He's dropped bombs on target and been in the air without break and without food or drink for six hours. Now he has to execute a precision landing on board a moving ship. These pilots train like athletes. They're also carefully looked after. Everything's been designed so that they can stay focused on the task at hand. Once in the cockpit, nothing should distract them. Color-coded flight deck jerseys indicate who does what. This one's known as a yellow dog. He watches the pilot and authorizes the takeoff. On the flight deck, just one person is responsible for the pilot. He guarantees his safety and we try to do that with simple movements. The pilot follows a member of the crew in yellow from the beginning to the end, from when he straps in until the moment the plane is catapulted into the air. Working like this allows him to concentrate on just one other person, one individual who's responsible for the aircraft. The pilots must remain anonymous for fear of reprisals from members of the Islamic State group. Since the Charles de Gaulle arrived in the Persian Gulf, France has been in charge of naval operations within the coalition. On the eighth deck, the general staff meet to plan strikes against militants from the Islamic State group. Officers from Britain, Germany and the US are also aboard the ship. This is a first, and it's the result of lengthy cooperation with the United States, cooperation between the carrier vessel battle groups in particular, and we've got to a level of trust and synergism that today we could replace one of the American aircraft carriers in its functions. We could do that here in the Gulf, within the coalition that's currently fighting against the Islamic State group. On February 1st, these Rafale fighter jets took off armed with Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Just a few nautical miles away, American jets were doing the same, taking off from the Truman aircraft carrier. Their joint mission, to destroy one of the Islamic State group's training camps to the north of Aleppo, one of many collaborative strikes. Since the Charles de Gaulle sailed into the region, strikes against the jihadist militia have increased threefold. We received orders to intensify our combat missions. We still have enough space on board to carry out a lot more operations than we could in the past. Intensifying airstrikes on Iraq and Syria is quite an undertaking and calls for a lot of commitment from the sailors aboard the carrier as well as on all the other boats. An aircraft carrier is never alone at sea. It would be too vulnerable. It's accompanied by the carrier vessel battle group. Submarine, warships, helicopters, and this plane, the Hawkeye. The aircraft's always launched from the Charles de Gaulle strip 30 minutes before the fighter jets leave. The crew check the plane before takeoff, inspecting the turbines, the propellers, then the radars are activated. The particular role of the Hawkeye is to collect information while airborne. Flying at high altitudes, it can collect data over a large area before transmitting it to nearby vessels. Among them, the Chevalier Paul warship. We're on board the French Navy frigate. The ship escorts the aircraft carrier constantly, sometimes within close range, and other times disappearing from view, but it's always in radar contact. On the ship's bridge, everyone's focused on the naval traffic, navigating between petrol tankers and fishing boats. Our main concern is to make sure that the Charles de Gaulle is not bothered by anything. So we escort the ship and stay braced for any eventual threat or any maritime traffic that could interfere with its course. 
Our job is to put ourselves between it and any obstacles and to clear the zone, maneuvering to give the carrier a wide berth. 200 men and women work day and night on the boat, often below deck. It's a state-of-the-art warship with no portholes. Everything happens in the ship's hull. The operations center collects information from the air and from above and below the ocean's surface. The ship's radar range extends to 400 kilometers. The vessel plays a key role in creating a security perimeter around the aircraft carrier, allowing the Rafale and the Super Etendard jets to carry out their missions in Iraq and Syria and to warn the Charles de Gaulle of any kind of threat. Beyond its ability to act as eyes and ears for us, it's also able to go into areas where the threat is more serious, be that a threat from the air, planes, surface-to-air missiles, or from the sea, small or large boats and submarines. It's one of the most sophisticated tools the French Navy has at its disposal today. The warship is heavily armed, latest generation missile defense systems, anti-submarine missiles and a number of cannons. Back to the Charles de Gaulle now on one of the helicopters that shuttles between the ships in the fleet. One of them, La Marne, is the supply ship, which refuels and replenishes stocks of munitions, supplies and even delivers post for the troops making sure that some aspects of daily life are upheld, even at sea. As the sun sets on the Persian Gulf, the last jets are coming in to land. All is calm on the bridge, and the officer on watch surveys the horizon. The French Navy's flagship is steered by a woman. She carefully positions the carrier, ready for the planes to touch down. To catapult the aircraft, you have to have the wind in front of you. And we have quite a limited zone, so we have what we call aviation credit. I have to be thinking constantly about how much time I have left on this route, and as soon as I have a free spot where I'm not bringing a plane into land, I turn around to build up more aviation credit. Following Flory's orders, MAM works with a joystick, the 21st century version of the ship's wheel. She's proud to steer a boat of this size. That's my dream, to captain an aircraft carrier like this and have all of that responsibility. That's always been my dream. And what do you tell your friends? I tell them what I do. They have a hard time believing it, but this is what it is. At the end of her watch, Flory goes back to her cabin and tidies things up before she lets the camera in. On a boat, we don't say bedroom, we say our post. So you can see we have our bunk, space for our personal hygiene and our office. It's a Spartan life on board, but there is space for rest and relaxation, even downtimes planned with military precision. Depending on our rank, we have different quarters where we can go and hang out together, watch the TV or flick through magazines. There's also a reading room on board. Everything's designed so that a sailor can stay here long term, that we can work and then switch off, do some sport, relax, that sort of thing. At certain times of the day, the rear deck turns into a makeshift gym, with exercise mats laid down amid the rigging. All ranks get together to sweat out the stresses of the day. When they set out on a mission, many sailors don't know how long they will be away. And after a few weeks at sea, there's always the possibility of cabin fever, as well as the pressure of living at close quarters with fellow sailors. Finding opportunities to let off steam are captain's orders. Sport is one way, food another. Raphael's one of the most well-known members of the ship's crew. He's the baker. Producing 1,400 baguettes every day, he's responsible for making snacks for the night shift and for bringing a French touch to the ship's breakfast in the form of freshly baked croissants. Bread is one of our earliest memories from childhood. A bit of good bread at breakfast, the pastries, all of that. It takes you straight back to childhood. And for your average French person, 
Bread is just like camembert cheese or red wine. It's an institution. With 2,000 people on board, the aircraft carriers a floating city, a hive of activity. Each crew member focuses on his or her tasks, crossing paths with their fellow shipmates. The corridors stretch for kilometers. There are 11 decks and hundreds of narrow passageways. Serving on a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is an honor for these sailors and a unique experience in a military career. Life on board is extremely challenging, but it's also thrilling. The current circumstances have really boosted the crew's determination. You have to find that balance between having younger recruits who need training and the more experienced sailors who will teach them the technical aspects of the vessel. It's a very special boat and we do a lot of different things here, all of them much more sophisticated than what we could do on another boat. For example, when it comes to the aeronautical maintenance, we carry out operations on board which we don't do at military bases and that's what allows the carrier to stay at sea. As soon as the jets land, they head to the workshop. Actually, it's more like a factory. 500 people work here, a quarter of the Charles de Gaulle's full staff. All the aircraft come here for repair. The 18 Rafales, the eight Super Etendard, the four helicopters and the two Hawkeyes. The mechanics are passionate about their work, checking for problems and carefully patching up any damage. The safety of the fleet's pilots depends on their attention to detail. Xavier is one of the workshop's foremen. He knows every nook and cranny on the ship and every bit of kit. Over the last 10 years, he's spent many months aboard the Charles de Gaulle, a strong sense of commitment that he tries to pass on to his fellow technicians. We often invite our technicians to come along to the operations briefings so that they understand what the ultimate goal of their work is. There are 500 aeronautical technicians on board working day and night. I have teams working in shift patterns. Some of them get up at 3 in the morning, and then they work for 6 hours. As a job, it's very physically demanding, and so alongside that, when you can see what the end product of our work is, that is, the missions that they fly, then people are more motivated. They know why I'm asking them to work late into the night. The planes come in covered in dust from the Iraqi and Syrian deserts. When they fly over the sea, salt accumulates on the fuselage, which can be very corrosive. Cleaning the aircraft is a daily undertaking, but the workshop also has to deal with much bigger tasks, like assembling engines. All this must be done unassisted on the aircraft carrier. What I really enjoy is seeing something leave the workshop. Here, for example, it's an engine. And then seeing the plane take flight just after I've worked on it. It's always a good feeling, because that's a few hours of our lives, sometimes days of work, which you then see taking off in the air. The Charles de Gaulle bears a gold embossed motto, discipline, honor, and homeland. The carrier is first and foremost a military vessel but it's also a political and symbolic bearer of French values, something each crew member is acutely aware of. France is the only European country to have kept a carrier vessel battle group. Our reporter, Amel Sherrier, is here in the studio for more on this story. Amel, thank you so much for your report. The, the Charles de Gaulle is the only aircraft carrier in Europe now. Uh, France, then, the only country to have such a vessel. Does this give France a real advantage in the US-led coalition? Yes, because France is uh, the only European ally with such possibilities. Uh, the United K Kingdom has no more aircraft carriers, so two are being built just for a moment, but they are not ready yet. Uh, France has had command of the Croatian task for, for several weeks. This is the proof it is not just a symbolic uh, coalition, you know, because it's a question of trust and it's also a question of working together and say, uh, sharing many things including intelligence. Amal, can you explain how the coalition functions? Uh, the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle now, of course, on its way back to France. But, you know, when you were there, how, how were key decisions made? How were missions launched? When we were there, part of the coalition headquarters 
was you know on the aircraft carrier so you have a french commander the french admiral and you have also uh, of course french officer but you have a british a german and an american officer and they are here for the whole mission so they all prepare the mission together that's the first point the second point it's amazing to see also how much things are shared for instance when we arrived with julien we arrived from bahrain but we arrived in an american helicopter you know and the crew need to stay on board so the american crew stay on board on the french aircraft carrier for one day and if you look all around also you have seen we could see a british vessel and also a gemma vessel uh, in the battle fleet um you were on board during the film shoot basically living there um tell us about life on on the ship on the aircraft carrier well, the first thing you notice when you arrive, it's the noise, in fact, because you have dozens of aircrafts roll off the decks, you know, every day. So that is very impressive, it's the first point. The second point is France has gone and many things, in fact, just to make life on board more comfortable. So you can see that even in the largest room, you can have only two crew members. And if you compare it to the American aircraft carrier crewman, it's totally the opposite because it's 200 person to a room. You see the difference. Also, it's important to see that they have telephone on board, they have internet, but of course, no cell phone and no social media. That is very important because it's still in military action. And also what is funny is the cooks are all French, but in fact, the food is purchased locally well, on each port, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can eat meat and you can eat camel meat. So it's not very good, say, or you can also eat sweet potato gratin with chelted uh, cheese, and that is quite good. It was Napoleon who said that an army marches on its stomach, and I'm sure he meant the same thing about a navy too. Armel, thank you very much indeed for your report. I'm Sharia's report. You can see it again, of course, via our website, francevancat.com. This is Reporters on France Vancat. Stay with us.